Tesla's market cap has surged beyond Ford's, but according to a new report from Navigant Research, Ford is still ahead when it comes to automated driving systems. Joining us to talk about this report is one of its authors, Sam Abu Al Samid. Welcome back to the show, Sam. Uh, it's great to be back again, Megan and uh, Jason. So the latest Navigant Research Leaderboard report on automated driving systems came out today. What is the biggest takeaway? The big takeaway is that uh, several of the big automakers are, at least according to the way we've ranked, uh, done this ranking, um, are leading the race to commercialize autonomous vehicles or self-driving cars. And the the reason why that is, what we, what we did is we didn't just look at the technology, look at who's got necessarily the, the best technology, but we looked at uh, a more comprehensive approach uh, of which companies have combination of technology, the ability to actually create, you know, build vehicles, mass market vehicles, um, and actually bring them to market and, and support those vehicles. So, you know, even though there's a lot of, you know, little startups in Silicon Valley doing a lot of interesting things, and even companies like, like Waymo, uh, the Google spinoff, that, you know, are, have arguably have the best technology overall, um, what they don't have is the ability to actually manufacture cars. Yeah, I noticed that you, you pointed that out, um, that it's not always a matter of like writing an app, let's say, you know, approaching it from the Silicon Valley perspective. Uh, the, the opposite could also kind of be true to a certain degree, right? Like le legacy automotive companies need this advanced, these advanced smarts in, in technology and thinking in that in that direction in order to head into this world, which I guess they just end up buying the companies if that's the case. Would that be <laughs> would that be right? Yeah, that's that's absolutely true. Um, you know, I mean, they've they've bought um, you know between the automakers and some of the big suppliers like Delphi and Continental and Bosch, they've bought a lot of a lot of startups over the last several years, uh, both in Silicon Valley and elsewhere, especially in Israel. There's a bunch of companies in Israel uh, that have popped up in recent years doing some interesting things, and of course into Tell about Mobileye a few weeks ago, uh, another Israeli startup. But um, you know, b besides that, you know, they've also been re actively recruiting, and the the manufacturers all have um, research centers in the Silicon Valley area, you know, in Palo Alto and Mountain View and, and Santa Clara. Uh, so they they all have a presence there, and they're working with a lot of these companies either. Uh, using them as suppliers, or they've invested in them, uh, done venture investments in them, or seed rounds in them, um, or in some cases like Cruise Automation, uh, they've actually bought them outright. So there's, the, you know, without without what's going on in Silicon Valley, um, the traditional auto industry probably wouldn't uh, be as far along as it is right now because there's been a lot of really rapid advancements but what the what silicon valley doesn't have is the ability to actually bring all this technology to market in some in a machine as complex as a as a vehicle right. so tell us a little bit about the methodology of the report um how did uh, you put it together so what we do in our leaderboard reports is, you know, we'll pick a, a, a market segment, in this case, automated driving systems, and um, we'll pick the, the top companies in that segment. And we have, uh, in this case, uh, 10 different criteria that we scored uh, companies on uh, based on strategy and execution. So uh, everything from their technology to their production capabilities, uh, sales, marketing and distribution, their global reach, um, and, you know, a category we call staying power, you know, how... Um, do they have the financial resources to actually do what it is they want to do? Uh, and we we give each each company a score in each one of these ten categories, uh, and then come up with an overall score. Uh, and Ford came out in front uh, this time around. We we last did this uh, in late 2015. Uh, this time uh, Ford moved up from sixth place to first overall, just barely ahead of GM, and then uh, the Renault Nissan Alliance and Daimler. Um, and Waymo came in sixth overall. They they got Waymo actually got the best score on uh, technology, but uh, because they don't have any manufacturing capability uh, and they haven't set up any partnerships yet for manufacturing, uh, that's that's where they they lost some points there. What about Uber? They're in sixteenth place. Um, what about uh, wh where do you see them in terms of staying power? And have all of the lawsuits that they've been involved in or, you know, the other scandals we've heard about it, was that taken into account in your report? 
Yeah, that was taken into account. Um, you know, the the fact that they consistently lose billions of dollars every year uh, is definitely a, a big uh, black mark uh, for them. You know, especially in terms of staying power, but also, you know, they they have no manufacturing capability. They do have a partnership with with Volvo to develop. Uh, a car platform that they can um, integrate their their driving system on, but they don't have any manufacturing capability of their own. And one of the the issues um, with companies like Uber is, you know, they have a they have, what they have is a software platform, you know, with their their um, their ride hailing system, but. Um, that's something that's actually fairly easy to replicate, as we've seen, you know, during South by Southwest a few weeks ago. Even though Uber and Lyft don't operate in in uh, Austin, Texas, you know, there was a bunch of other companies. They, you know, may not have scaled to the degree they needed to to support South by Southwest, but it's actually fairly easy to replicate. You know, a lot of what Uber's done, and car makers are doing exactly that. So it's going to be a lot easier for the companies that have the the manufacturing and and design and development infrastructure to add on. The, the software platform for the ride hailing than it will be for companies like Uber to go in the opposite direction. And Uber loses billions of dollars without actually spending any money on capital. You know, if they want to build cars or buy cars, they're going to have to spend tens of billions of dollars a year to do that. And it's not clear that they ever have a path to profitability doing that. One thing I realized when I was kind of reading the front page of the report with the, the kind of chart of the leaders, contenders, challengers, followers, is that there's so many players in this in this space right now. And you, you point out that, you know, autonomous vehicles and, and, and production of autonomous vehicles like it dates dates back into the 50s. It's not like it's not like they suddenly started in the last couple of years. And hey, look at us now. But uh, I realize we talk about it a lot on the show, but that, that chart really kind of illustrates uh, in a very visual sense just kind of what kind of production is happening. A few a few missing names from there, and I'm sure there are plenty more, but, uh, you know, up-and-comers, new 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 names into the field, like Faraday Future, the FF91, the uh, Le Echo, Le C Pro, which I guess, is that more kind of along the lines of the technology companies that are getting into the space? Is that why they didn't quite make it to the list? Well, certainly in the, in the case of Le C, all we've seen is one concept car. We haven't actually seen any real product for them That's from true. them. Yeah. Um, you know, and Faraday, um, you know, it's not entirely clear how how much actual real capability they have yet. Um, you know, and you, you know, you mentioned, you know, I mean, we've got a fairly big group of companies uh, already, and so we we decided we wanted to focus on the companies that actually had the the highest probability of at least some success in this marketplace. And you know, we we will be updating this report again probably in 2018, um, and depending on how things go for Faraday and and for some other companies, um, you know, we'll probably see uh, some companies added to the group next time around, and, and we may well see some companies drop off. Like uh, when we did this last time, uh, we only looked at auto at automakers at OEMs, and um, several of the companies that we included that time. Um, we dropped off the group this time because they weren't really doing anything in the autonomous mm -hmm. space. What about legal issues? Are are some of these uh, are, are some of these companies more likely to push through some of the regulations? Uh, is that why they make it higher on the list, or are regulations just across the board going to be difficult for, or easy for everyone? Well, overall, there there actually isn't a whole lot in the way of regulations right now for autonomous vehicles, other than um, rules that say that there has to be a driver in the vehicle in, in many places. But aside from that, you know, there isn't much specific to autonomous vehicles. Uh, so that that's that's an area that's being discussed. But one one thing that um, will be a problem from a, a legal perspective is liability um, for the performance of these systems. I mean, you know, when we drive a car, if we make a mistake and get into a crash, we're, you know, the human driver is liable for that. We're, we're responsible. Um, you replace that human with a virtual driver, you know, software driver, and if something happens, and it will, I mean, you know, none of these systems are, are going to be perfect, especially in the early years. Uh, there's there's going to be issues that are going to have to be dealt with, and the, the manufacturers are the ones that are ultimately going to be liable for the performance of those systems. And that's why I think that the companies that have the, the deepest pockets, the, the, the best resources, are the ones that are most likely to succeed um, and also, you know, um, part of why we focused, you know, part part of our our um, scoring this time was looking at companies that were actually developing the 
the services to deploy the deploy these vehicles because I think especially in the early years you're not going to be able to buy these most of these vehicles they will only be available through uh, on demand mobility services through autonomous ride hailing services and so you know the companies that are building out those services uh, will have the best chance of success. So, so what do you think about the Tesla uh, exceeding the market cap of uh, Ford? Was that a surprise to you? Um, uh, the, the two words, irrational exuberance, um, come to <laughs> mind uh, whenever I hear of Tesla's uh, market capitalization. It, it's, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> um, you know, they, they sold, you know, an average of 8,400 cars a month total um last uh you know, over the last three months ford sold you know almost ten thousand mustangs alone last year and or last month and you know 65 or seventy thousand f-150s you know their, their numbers are still minuscule and yes they were up a little bit over last year but not by a whole lot and the the toughest part of what they have to do is yet to come because they still have to produce the model three